talking shorts because Brooklyn's the borough. Greg, Mike, aka Loudmouth Larry. Larry Loudmouth. Larry Loudmouth. Where did well, that come from? That's not me. That's that's my imaginary friend. That, exactly. That I, uh, you know, he 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 kind of everybody lives through Larry. That's right. And uh, it started just as you know when I was doing the, the Coke cans, the right. pop stars and Coke heads, and it was the mouth that was just like apparent on all the cans, and then it's kind of grown, you know, as my career as an artist has grown and. You know, now there's certain sayings that fans and collectors have have said that now live with Larry and you know they live on the stickers and whatnot. The stickers so, are awesome. The shirts are awesome. Thanks, man. This is one of your it. first ones. Yeah, it's the original OG. Yeah. yeah. Well, I am kind of like your big brother <laughs> slash OG mentor. I think that um it's amazing your 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 journey. Um, we were just talking about sloppy seconds. Right. In these parties, and you'd be on the mic and. Midnight socialite be hanging upside down, taking pictures, and Caleb be running around doing whatever Caleb does, and you kind of like, I mean, that movement alone for me was like the extra fun in Atlanta. It didn't feel yeah. like Atlanta. It felt like some underground yeah. happening, and you were spearheading it. Yeah, I mean, we just, I felt like at that time we were just really just trying to have as much fun as possible and right. not really giving a fuck about whatever. what was going on, right. you know what I mean? It's like. We felt like there was a void missing in the city at the time. You know, we were going to LA and New York and Miami and feeling that same energy, but we didn't feel it here, so we we're like, you know, we gotta create it. And I think that's kind of been always the mentality that we take. It's like, if it's missing, let's make it happen. And you know? it was kind of before the hipster movement started, right? Like, you guys were, to me, the original hipsters. Like, it was a hodgepodge of you had your ghetto rapper, you had yeah. your suburban this, your socialites, your, you know. It was an amazing, you know, hodgepodge of cultures. Yeah, I think it was just trying to like break down the barriers, you know. Right. I mean, we always like, I know with Caleb and I and Ian at the time, like we were all, you know, we grew up in, you know, listening to hip hop, and yeah. I grew up doing graffiti, so, you know, all those things, you know, there was Caleb who was into dance, like break, dance, breaking back then. It's kind of like everything just collided, and it was just like a meeting of the minds. It was so, an awesome uh, time in Atlanta pop culture history. So speaking of the graffiti. When did, I mean, because I knew you were creative. I mean, you, you, just, you used to do the flyers for mm -hmm. Sloppy Seconds, right? right. Um, but when did the painting, like, I mean, you just, you I mean, went I, from that to Yeah, oh. well, and that was like, you know, it's always one of those things I was kind of work. I've, I've been doing graffiti since I was 12 or 13 years old, up when I lived in, you know, up north in Connecticut. And, right. And up there, and uh, I just kind of, when I got into the fashion side of things, that's kind of when I took a break from the painting. Because I got, you know, designing jeans and whatnot, right. and, uh, the trade show side of things, and I kind of just put it on hold. And it was kind of that thing that I did just to like kind of get away when there was no rules and you know there is nobody saying right. it's got to look this way or it's got to be that way. So it was like the one thing I kind of kept to myself that I was able to continue to to do creatively with no rules, no boundaries, no clients, no deadlines. So. It was kind of just like harboring that and letting it build up. I mean, right. I've been doing it the whole time, but it was like I just didn't bring it out to the public till I felt like I was ready to showcase something. Right, and in, at that point, you then soon after opened ABV. Yeah. yeah. So that was I did a you know the solo shows in Miami and, and then San Francisco and then Atlanta, and I kind of felt at that time like there wasn't much of like the street art contemporary scene in Atlanta. So that's when we decided to open this spot up and. You know, we were doing design work for a few clients here and there, um, and I wanted to have a space where we could have a gallery, our creative agency, my studio where I could paint. You know, the team that we built together to, you know, with this concept, and that's when we opened ABV. So this this piece right here is one of the only ones I have left from the Pop Stars and Coke Dead series, which was that first body of work that I did. I thought that was an incredible name, by the way. 
appreciate it. And when you did that, it was like so <laughs> like, yeah. And, uh, some G Clay prints that I did. Like this one was just a release that I did with uh, One Time Run. Nice. Which is, uh, they do a, a time release online uh, print release. And we did, a, uh, I think there was 10 of these pink ones that were released and then 50 of the blue ones. Sorry, there was 20 of these pink ones and then there was 50 of the blue. Nice. And um, there was 10 of the gray. So we did it in three different color variations. Uh, this piece here is a print that I did with, uh, actually a collaboration with Dr. Pepper. Uh, we did, it was a collaboration series called One of a Kind. And with that, I took a Dr. Pepper can, repainted it, and then drew this piece and photographed the can and then worked it into the whole piece. So again, that was like, a, the can was one of a kind and then, and then so yeah. that's an actual can. Yeah, that was an actual can that was painted, and then they did a sweepstakes for that online. And it's ironic. I mean, you're literally right down the street from. We're on Auburn Avenue, basically, yeah. and it's right down the street from the King Center, yeah, which is one of the most historic parts of Atlanta. Yeah. Is there any reason this particular area caught your eye? Um, we just felt home, at home here. You know, uh, we looked at some other spots, and this just, you know, there was a nice like street culture and people outside and. You know, just enjoying the city and there was new growth and development. I think that's kind of like where we felt comfortable, you know, fitting in. Nice. Yeah. So how is the creative agency going? I mean, you definitely Amazing. Paint yeah. Yeah. So tell us about some of your clients and some of the things you're doing. Um, I mean, it really... Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. I mean, that's huge. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Huge. Yeah, so you showed me a sneak peek. Yeah, I actually just wrapped up a uh, painting two weeks of mural in their Atlanta office out back. They're doing a nice little putting green out there. and They had a wall and I incorporated some characters and, and the word Facebook into the art. And uh, so they're going to be, uh, we filmed the whole video for that, so that's going to be dropping soon. Um, yeah, things like that. It's really just figuring out ways that we can incorporate, you know, design, our aesthetic, the Greg Mike, you know, artwork and, you know, some of this these commercial stuff, right? Um, you know, obviously projects that we feel are fitting the look and feel and vibe that we're going for. Nice. And then, you know, we've been doing a lot of stuff for uh, music festivals. Like, we did the art direction for Counterpoint. Nice. Did some big ins installations for Camp Bisco. Um, doing some stuff for Red Bull. So it's going well, man. Just nice. super blessed and trying to stay positive. Yeah. And focused on you know the bigger picture. So let me ask you a question. These murals, these wall yeah. murals, because the one you showed me, I mean, it was massive. But you've done several. Like, how much time does it take, and how do you get your vision up on that wall? Yeah, um, I mean, there's a. It obviously depends on the, the detail, of the sketch. You know, so right. some stuff's a little bit easier and quicker. Do you, you have know? to draw it on the wall? Obviously, I mean, most of it I'll sketch first. Okay. And it'll just be like a black and white sketch, and then uh, just basically sketch it up on the wall as well. You know, you have a piece of paper, and I mean, the thing with graffiti is growing up in that era is. You know, it was all when you're painting walls, you know, back in the day, there is no like ruler structure. Or, it's right. like, you know how long your arm is. So like if a letter has to be, you know, twice the length of your arm, you know, OK, you know, right there. Nice. So it's like there's a lot of things like that, you know, counting the size of the can to measure things out. Right. I mean, there's a lot of like tricks that you learn growing up. And, and I mean, I think you just you realize, too, over time, like, you know, little things like that that, nice. that can help make it go down a lot quicker. That's amazing, man, because, I mean, it's truly a talent. Obviously, when I saw you do your first, I remember the first one was, it was the riding, somebody was riding something, and they had the... Oh, yeah, 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 when Larry was, was riding the, uh, the bear. Yes. And, yeah, was that, that was that actually mirror? for uh, Living Walls, which is a, um, it's a street art project in Atlanta. Nice. And, uh, that was, I think, two or three years ago. Crazy. It was not too far from here. That's when I was bugging. Yeah. I mean, because we did, we did <laughs> stuff together here at ABV. Um, but then I was like, yo, he's doing walls. Like, that's some other shit. Yeah, man, I just, I, I like to, you know, attack all mediums. You know, that's what I'm no mediums. So, so what, what celebrity clients do you have? Because I know Samantha Ronson. I went to her spot. Yeah. She had some two yeah. big ass cans. Like, what are some of your celebrity clients? Oh, um, I know Swiss Beats. Yeah. And you just did some work? At yeah, a studio, yeah. Right? I was uh, I was up there uh, not too long ago, and super nice dude. He actually just you know hit me up online, saw some work, and uh, reached out through a mutual friend, and was like, I have an art studio. If you can use it whenever you want. Nice. Come to New York and use all my supplies. I got canvases for days. Wow. So I just went up there, and uh, you know we chatted on the phone, and then went up there and painted a piece for him up in his studio. Nice. Yeah. What'd you make? Like, what was it? Uh, it's actually, it's one of the pieces online. It's kind of like more of a collage piece with a bunch of my characters that are all melting together. Nice. 
Yeah, so it's just appreciate it, man. Thank I mean, it's you. like, yeah, I don't know. Seeing you come from where you came from to now is very inspiring. So, what would you tell people who are artists that feel like their art might not be enough, or you know, they might yeah. need to do something else to be someone else? I mean, what do you say to those aspiring artists? I mean, just keep pushing hard work. You know, I always say like, you know, if somebody's doing something, make sure you're doing it different. You know, you don't want to come out and replicate. Or duplicate. So I mean, just make sure you stick with it. I mean, it takes a lot of people a lot of a lot of time and years to figure out and distinguish their style and develop their craft. I mean, I'm you know going on 31 now. Right. And I've been painting since I was 12. So wow. that just goes to show, like you know, put it in perspective. You know, nothing yeah. is an overnight success. Absolutely. Man. Like people will look and you know all the time and see people and they're like, oh, that happened overnight. But a lot of times there's more. Yeah, more to it. it. Yeah. Well. Um, First hand experience in your body of work. I just want to say I'm proud of you, man. Appreciate we'll it, man. Keep, Thank we'll, you. Keep, we'll keep following Greg Mike. In Thank this you. Movement. Appreciate right. it. Yeah. Right. This is Greg Mike, and this is my portrait. Mm -hmm.